So we're going to do a bit of a talk about swing weight. So what is it and how does it affect the player? So swing weight is a scale of balance in the golf club. So essentially it's a, it's a static measure of balance point. So what we do is we use the scale that's on the side here. So we put the club onto it here. It's a, so basically it's a, it's a balance point around a fixed fulcrum. So that gives us a set of letters and numbers to, to gauge the balance of the club by. So what it means is, it is essentially it's used as an indication of how much feel for the club heads there is. Actually what it is, it, it's, a, it's affected by a number of things. The length of the club, head weight, shaft weight, and a balance point within the club as well. You know, the grip weight and the lie of the club also have an effect on it if you were to change any of those. So basically anything you change about the club will have an impact on swing weight. Because of the static nature of the weight measures, you know, for example, D1, D1 with this shaft in will not swing the same as D1 with another shaft in. So it's always something that requires interpreting. So what you can't do is you can't say, right, I'm D1 in this club, I'm gonna be D1 in another club. It, it, unfortunately, it doesn't work, like, unfortunately for us, it doesn't work like that. It's a very, very sensitive beast swing weight. Um, and so really, the correct swing weight is the one that just allows you to time the swing as cleanly as possible but it requires testing with every single club. So one of the things I'm going to do, just to have us a bit of a, a display on it, is we've got a, a ping driver here. We're gonna change the weight in the back to change the swing weight. So this one is the, uh, the one of the lighter weights they do, and it's D0.5. And we're gonna gradually go through the weights and kind of give an indication on what it's likely to do. So this isn't a case of saying that one particular swing weight is better than another. This is, we're all gonna be affected in different ways by, you know, some players are better with a light swing weight, light balance, um, some are better with a heavier balance, but in terms of what you can expect to see from a change. So we start off, so D0.5, fairly light, or on the lighter side. And so what it means is, the lighter the swing, swing weight, the higher, generally the higher up the club the balance point is. So what it means is that the, higher, the lighter the swing weight, the, the closer to your hands the balance, balance is. So, I'm gonna, Hit a couple of shots here. So what we're looking for when we're testing and changing swing weight, so when we're in a fitting, what we'll do is we will adjust by adjusting either the weight in the back or on the driver head or a bit of lead tape to fine tune to get that timing as clean as possible. So the better we get that, the more naturally the club tracks through the ball. So. So for someone like me who plays with a little bit of a pull on the handle, the lighter the swing weight, the more likely that club is, as I work the club back to pick above plane. So what happens is if I can overpower the swing weight, I can pick the club up and then essentially cast it a little bit on the way down. There's not, there's not enough to hit against. And for me, a lighter swing weight, I get a little bit of a, a pick up and a bit of a, what we call a Zorro through the ball, flick at it. So what it creates is it doesn't naturally drop into plane. So that kind of shot where it gets a little across it, a little cutty, for me, when I go a little bit lighter, is what happens. You lose a bit of feel for the club head. So the more aggressive your swing or the more you pull down on the handle, the more likely you are to, to throw the club out of plane and hit either a bit of a smother pull and then overcompensate and flare it right. So I'm gonna move the weight up by three grams in this instance, so from a 14 gram to a 17 gram weight. So that takes us from D0.5 to D2.5 in this case. And what that does is just augments the head a little bit, gives me a little bit more sensation for it. And functionally, as I start to move the club down, that extra weight helps to drop the club in a little bit more. So it makes it harder for me to throw it over the top. So. so for me swinging it, got a little bit bottomy that one, I can, in transition, I can hit against that weight a little bit more. So whilst I misdirected the swing a little bit, that last one, ball speed, club speed and ball speed had gone up because I can use that weight to accelerate through the shot. If I can stay balanced, then it should go a little bit straighter. But. A little low on the face, but 
what we're seeing there is for me moving the club I can move it a lot from a field point of view much cleaner through the ball by having a little bit more weight in the head so it gets a little less handsy a little more flicky if I then take it a notch further and so when we're fitting we're always once we get a shaft to a point that we're comfortable with we're always fine-tuning the swing weight to get the delivery and the, the timing of through the ball, the squareness of the face as clean, as repeating as possible. Because essentially we want the club to swing through the ball, one could almost say on its own, we don't want the player to have to manipulate through the ball. So we're up at D4.5, now we change that weight again. So you know, as with any, if you exaggerate these changes, that's always the best way I think to, to mimic what swing weight does, if you exaggerate the change. So if I were to take a lot of weight out the head or the back weight to bring the balance point up. It's like turning the club around. It's the same mass, but there's very little on that bottom end. So you have to be very kind of dead arm to not lose control of the club. Equally speaking, if I were to put another 10 grams on the head, I've then really got to work the club or head away. It's going to drop in. I've got to really pull on the handle to get it through. So if you always exaggerate those changes, it gives you a good indication on what, what the club's going to do. So taking it another two swing at points heavier as I hit. That club head stays in behind me a little bit more. So straight away there, whereas my tend to miss with the other two is left, the moment we go a little heavier, it gives me plenty of club to hit against. I can really keep going with my swing, but we're now into case in point where the club's head's dropped behind. So both of those out to the right. So as we change that weighting around, what happens is, and the swing weight, what happens is my ability to deliver the club cleanly, in balance and squarely changes. And that's literally making a two or three gram change. Now that's actually quite a lot of a change. That's say so two swing weight points per change is quite a lot. So we would then, by making those sort of bigger changes, we can see where the top and bottom parameters are of what someone's capable of moving. And then once we've dialed in the shaft, we really fine tune those by using very small pieces of you know, lead tape just to, to find the correct balance that, that will allow the player, me in this case, to from the top to transition, have enough mass to drop it and keep it in plane but that allows me to work through a single line and keep the club head moving as cleanly and as neutrally as possible. So swing weight ease, very, very often overlooked. A lot of people talk about using a standard swing weight. But the problem is if you're a single point off, obviously these are quite exaggerated changes, but we can see if I'm going to put this on a, a slightly different screen. You know, so that one there showing the dispersion of all of those. Now I'd like to think I've got a pretty repeating action, um, but there's a vast difference in the left to right dispersion through me changing those swing weights. So the two on the right are the two that are heavy. And yes, as a golfer, you can say, oh, okay, maybe I can, I can move those back into the middle, but that's gonna require me to manipulate the club face to do it. You know, the first two, actually, first one hit well. The you know, second one is a little bit, you know, actually the, the lighter swing weights, I can clearly move and work a little bit better. You know, the, those hits in the middle, they're stronger, like a stronger ball speed there. But you can see that vast range of left and right by just changing head weight. That's the bit that really helps you dial in that left, right, front, back, strike consistency. So we use swing weight and it's really important. And we built a you know, 0.1.2 of a swing weight point in the tolerances that we built to. You know, a lot of other companies talk about half a swing weight point and that's really tight tolerance. You go to the bigger brands and it's a swing weight point tolerance either side. So suddenly you've got a two swing weight point tolerance to hit, which is, which is huge. And that's even if, you know, that's if they can hit them. So where we're looking at a half a point maximum top to bottom tolerance, you know, you're looking at you know, four times that from the bigger brands. And that has, as you can see from there, you know, Four point tolerance, well that four points is what we shifted that weight by there and you can see there on the screen there's a you know, 50, 60 yard difference. Now granted going full bore at it, but a 50, 60 yard difference in that left to right dispersion. So finding the right swing weight, and it's the right swing weight for that mix and components at whatever length, whatever weight, whatever grip size, 
to allow you to deliver the club in a repeating and a controlled manner, that's the real key to, to what creates a correct swing rate. It's not, a, it's not gonna be the same club to club, um, and it will progress a little bit through the set, but there really is a massive importance on swing weight. And unless the club's built correctly and built to a very tight tolerance around that, then all it really means is the player's got to do a lot of manipulation, a lot of finding the ball with the club face in order to find the target when they're on the course.